if NASA did discover, or should I say rediscover, a tenth planet in our solar system, then why would they have the need to cover it up? I mean, this would be the biggest discovery of the century, and yet, if it is covered up, there must be some reason, some reason to withhold this information from the public. The, the concept of a planet X or a tenth planet is not exactly new. The, the possibility of this object coming in and devastating our inner solar system is something mainstream astronomers certainly don't want to talk about. Planet X, as told to us by the Sumerians, has caused uh, havoc on our, on our planet in the past. Uh, as it discusses in the Bible, there's a, a day of Armageddon, or in the Revelations, that fire will fall from the skies and there'll be all types of calamities of this sort. The Sumerians dis, dis, uh, explained to us that when Nibiru, Planet X, passes through our inner solar system once every 3,600 years, it has gravitational effects on all the planets, one of them being Earth. When the ancient Greeks went back to Egypt, they asked the Egyptian priest cults what was civilization like a long time ago. And they said that in the pre previous 10,000 years, they had major devastating events. These were the type that crushed their civilization. Not wars, not pestilence, but dramatic physical events that literally crushed their civilization into back into the cave ages. And we see the devastation in cities in South America, ancient cities, that are now being discovered, which were obviously destroyed by massive earthquake-type situations. Earth definitely, without question, has had major earth changes that have destroyed entire civilizations, and the indication is that it was not that long ago. All the planets in our solar system are affected by the passage, but uh, if Planet X passes a certain million number of miles away from Earth, you can expect uh, a pole shift. The concept of a pole shift, in other words, the Earth moving its either magnetic or physical pole, has come up uh, many times when uh, we hear people talking about Planet X. Uh, mountain ranges would form, oceans would form huge tides, and uh, this would not be uh, something you'd want to uh, face in everyday life. This is, it would be a very violent event. There's, there's evidence that in the past, uh, such as the Ice Age and uh, mastodons being frozen instantly with still undigested food in their stomach, all over the Earth, there is uh, evidence that in the past we have had polar shifts or some type of cataclysm, cataclysmic event on Earth which happens in cycles over time. If this is in fact true, there would have to be evidence of these passages, ecological evidence, archaeological evidence that shows the uh, calamitous events that transpired during each passage. Our Earth gives evidence that we have had periodic pole shifts. Um, there's mountain building in and of itself is evidence. These mountains are like push together. If you're in an airplane and you look down at foothills, for instance, it almost looks like a rumpled blanket, like somebody took a blanket and pushed it and rumpled it. Mountains are, are forced upwards with great masses of rock snapping. Uh, this is signs of, of great pressure, not the gentle squeezing and pushing that happens with earthquakes at all. Indeed, uh, the, our Earth has had these periodic uh, pole shifts. You can see that in the evidence of the Earth. Uh, go back every peri time period and you can see other changes during these passages and when we have pole shifts and violent geological earthquakes and changes and the like shifting the, of the tipping of the earth and shifting of the crust uh, volcanoes explode um, and when they do there's a lot of molten lava pouring out well lava will being molten will line up with the current magnetic field and when lava hardens, that it's a permanent freeze, indicating the direction of magnetism at that moment in time. Well, this is one way that they have determined uh, the wandering pole theory, where they've identified places in Earth where they say, uh, at, at one time this appears to have been the North Pole, or that appeared to have been the South Pole, is through this frozen lava um, alignment. For instance, off of Japan, there's cities and roads that they find under the water. In Bermuda, we see roads and walls and the like. 
Uh, likewise, land can rise. Uh, Atlantis is rumored to be a continent that went under the waves during one of these cataclysmic uh, passages. Back around 1650 BC, or if you want to be, give it a little more leeway, between 1500 and 1700 BC, there is considerable evidence for a calamitous event. In fact, there are stories from that time uh, showing certain civilizations came and went, certain uh, powers that be were. Uh, overthrown at the time because of the celestial events that were happening and the earth changes that were happening. The last passage was during the Jewish Exodus, approximately 3,600 years ago. Nobody knows for sure the exact date because during these passages uh, mankind is just discombobulated. They stop keeping records, records are lost, so nobody can exactly pinpoint the date. There is a pattern to the cataclysms on Earth. If we go back every 3600 year period, we see that some major world catastrophe happened. We have the formation of Niagara Falls, the Great Lakes, mass extinctions. If it was inbound, there must be some signs of it approaching. Now many scientists seem to say that the current Earth changes are due to global warming, man-made pollution, and this would make sense until we take account that there are other changes happening in the solar system. One such theory says that cow flatulence, believe it or not, is responsible for depleting our ozone layer, which leads to our polar caps melting. But what about Mars? What about Mars's polar caps? They seem to be melting as well. There are many changes happening in the solar system. So what would be influencing our entire solar system as a whole, not just Earth? Observations are being made, and with little notice to the public. This article from CNN tells of a potential killer comet detected with only weeks of warning. In recent times, new planets and outer solar bodies are being discovered and observed. With so much sky to observe, it's no wonder we have so many last minute reports of potential near misses. Or could there be more that is being downplayed in the media or withheld altogether? There are a lot of probes that we send to Mars or to the outer planets to do imaging. Um, which could also have black ops projects attached to them that the public isn't going to know about. So if we send an orbiter to Mars to uh, you know, do a main mapping mission, it might have other black ops projects attached to that satellite collecting its own data that we're just not going to know about. And if they need to take into a full account uh, the main mapping mission or you know, take over that project for their own purposes, that satellite is gone. It becomes a black project. And people aren't, people aren't aware of those facts. The observatories around the world Many of them are very aware, acutely aware, and very worried about this inbound planet. Uh, you really need to look at what's happening, the weather irregularities, the changes in the Earth, and think of it in terms of these periodic passages uh, and make up your own mind. We don't have to have a collision for something to affect us. It can affect us at a distance. It could be on the other side of the sun, have a very large discharge into the sun. The sun could erupt with a full coronal discharge, which means it would come off in all directions from the sun. And we would be very affected. Our weather would be very affected and this new object, planet X or whatever you would call it, would be very far away from Earth. So the thing I want to stress is that you do not need a direct collision with something to be effective. In the years of the Reagan administration, there was a whole uh, idea to push having a Star Wars system that we would eventually be facing threats from, uh, you know, from space, whether it be uh, missiles launched theoretically by the Soviet Union and have a space-bearing uh, attack on us. Uh, we were um, publicly apprised of, that they were going to set up a Star Wars system, a space defense system. And uh, the other side to that is the, that there's been subtle nuances that also show which tie into ufology and the whole trend with uh, you know, extraterrestrials. Uh, is it not possible that the government does know more than they are telling us with theories such as Roswell and aliens visiting us that there could also be threats from outside our solar system which we're now being ma made aware of subtly like through the movies and media like Deep Impact or Armageddon or NASA releasing information saying that they're an asteroid could whack us in 2028 or thereabouts. It's making the public privy to this information so that they have a case history of events 
to uh, desensitize us to this information so that when instantly there is something new in the skies or in the heavens, we're not freaking out. The government agencies, uh, they are basically under contract not to tell you anything. They, the scientists have signed non-disclosure agreements, basically uh, they're under a gag order. It is impossible to go to a scientist and get a news release directly. You have to go through an official news release agency and they would give you information that has been blended and made nice for you. They would put out possibly a web page that is uh, the equivalent of third grade information and hope that the general public uh, takes this as the, the, you know, the information that came out of NASA. When they have all this sophisticated equipment and incredible amounts of information, and today's populace is very sophisticated and intelligent and well-educated. It's really an insult, uh, the information that they're putting out.